Hi everyone and thanks for joining me for this video. Um, what I'm doing right this minute is just removing some paper hexagons from where I have joined these blocks of the quilt to the ones on the edge. This is the bottom row of the of the um, underwater quilt and I've got the sun in my eyes it's probably too early in the morning to be doing this really but we'll see how it goes I'm not sure how much the sunlight's going to make a difference the first thing I want to do is thank everybody for all their comments and support for the 100th video and the 1000 subscribers I've done the paperwork and everything well, online paperwork for YouTube for that Google AdSense and they say it can take you know like up to 30 days to be approved but because I didn't have any um, copyright infringements and don't use music in my videos and such it was actually approved in less than three days and now as you're probably aware there's ads on the videos I think there might have been ads previously as well um, ads on the videos and that will get me some money the way it works is you don't physically get the money until the month after you've accrued a hundred dollars so with some people that'll be the first month with me it'll take a few months um, in the three days first second and third of February I've so far accrued $1.87, which is, um, yeah, it's not a lot of money, but I'm over the moon about it because it means I'm actually earning from the videos, which wasn't, wasn't my sole intention when I started making videos, but it's definitely a um, contributing factor. So probably in each maybe once a month I'll let you know how it's going money wise but you know if it sticks to roughly you know a dollar a day or a dollar fifty a day or something it makes it all worthwhile I mean the only thing that these videos have ever cost me is the cost of the camera and a uh, you know twenty dollar tripod I haven't spent any more money on making videos Oh, cost me ten dollars. I think it was ten dollars or fifteen dollars for the um, video making program that I use. So not a, not a huge expense, but I do get a huge amount of enjoyment out of out of the out of the process. And we'll you know, see how it goes. I'll let you know how it goes, but. Once again, thank you so much for all the support and please like and share and if you haven't subscribed, then subscribe because the sharing of the videos and the more people that watch them, obviously the more money I'll get. And now if I move back a bit, I've got the sun out of my eyes. Um, so I've just removed those papers. They go into my tray along with my bit of card where I keep the tally I've now taken out for this quilt I've taken out 5,200 papers there's no papers left in this bottom and some people have asked why do I take them out as I go along and some have asked when do I take them out there's no way once this quilt is finished then I'm going to want to take out 15,000 hexagons all in one go taking out that 20 just then that's more than enough at a time when if I have to do um, add in blocks where you're going to have two sides of a block sewn you know, when you add it in that's about my limit, you know, 30, 40 blocks or papers. Otherwise, it's just too easy to miss them. I was looking at this 
just earlier and I could see some threads basting threads and there were two two hexagons in this brown section that I hadn't taken the papers out of so you know doing it a block at a time if you can miss them imagine taking them out out of an entire like two and a half meter square quilt that just is beyond my comprehension so I take them out once actually I haven't done it with these once everything around has been sewn in so on this fish there's actually two hexagons there that one's coming undone probably not a good example and that's not a good example either because you can't see anything this one there's one two three four hexagons that can four papers that can come out of this fish because all the outer ones need to keep the papers in until it's sewn in so with this I could remove the black one and then another three red ones which I thought I'd actually already done that with the fish but I obviously haven't these smaller fish I could remove two um, that small fish they're all little this bigger that's an angle one one two three can come out of there so it all depends on the shapes that you're doing if you're doing flowers like the centerpiece and the six around it I always remove the center one once the six are around if that six are part of a bigger thing and you're going to be carrying on to make a bigger flower then I just wait till I'm at the end of my thread and that normally means I can remove two or three papers and then as things get bigger like when I'm doing these blocks it may be that I can remove eight papers per long thread but that's how I do it so with what I've got here which this video is going to be about the underwater quilt this border or the, or the turquoise is not going to be having anything added to it this is it this is the final edge it will eventually be cut straight once it's quilted but there's no more hexagons to be added to this border so I can or I have removed all the papers out that border I mean I've done it in the past where I've left those papers in until it was time to start quilting almost or time to pin all the layers together only because it keeps it a bit neater but I really don't care so what I've got here I've got a few things to mention one is you may have noticed that I've added to the name of the channel I've added hexagon obsession to the channel because there's probably not going to be any other crafty projects or if they are hexagon quilting is going to be the primary one and I'm also using that as a brand name for merchandise down the track so I'm going to get a when I've got the money get a graphic artist to do the design I already know what it's going to look like it's just I'm no good at anything like that get the design done and look at you know releasing you're having a merchandise shop through one of those outlets that they just put your design onto the range of items as they're ordered so that's why it's changed to hexagon obsession I'll still keep my name in it but that that's the reason behind that I'm still umming and ahhing about the new channel purely because I'm not a hundred percent sure it needs to go as a new channel but I think there's going to be enough new ideas and content don't need the band-aids on um, that will keep it totally separate from this channel as far as 
what the subject matter is and things like that. So obviously when I start the new channel I will mention it and there will be a link but I'm thinking that channel can just be a, a standalone. So now back to back to this. Um, as I've said there's no papers in this bottom edge. There are still papers in this other edge. So this is a third done which means there's three and a bit rows finished. This is the bottom row. You've seen parts of this. Now you're going to get to see the rest of it. So I'm not sure what, how I'm going to do this. I might ju just do it as a scroll, scrolling along. And let's see what we've got. And that won't go down low enough, I don't think. Not sure if this is working because I can't see because of the sunlight. But I think. Okay. Oh, now I've got the shadow of the camera. That's probably not the best way to do it. So we might do it this way. So what we've got. Actually, I may see if I can do it from the other direction. Okay. So what we've got is we've got the bottom left hand corner coming along we've got a fish we've got seaweed we've got more seaweed more seaweed a turtle now this was interesting because I did this block and I sent a photo of it to my friend and she said it's lopsided and I had a look and one of these front flippers was angled wrong so I had to and I'd already taken the papers out so I had to um, remove two hexagons and re relocate them so that was um, a bit of a challenge so no matter how well you design something and execute it you'll always have problems this is some more seaweed and if I just move that for a moment we come along here to what should be a couple of fish so here's one here and there's one there now my friend said to me when I sent a photo of this she said they look strange and the reason they look strange is because they're at an angle. This design of fish was de made for... I have the bottom of my... Hexagons always have the flat on the bottom. But if you were to do it with the pointy bits at the bottom... And that's a thread going across there. Pointy bits at the bottom these fish would actually stand yeah looking correct but I didn't um little bits of thread there I'm saying I didn't um design these fish these were copied from that booklet and that quilt had the pointy bit at the bottom the pointy edge of the hexagon at the bottom as opposed to you know so it was going now I'm trying to see pointy bit down well that's flat bit down pointy bit down so I do mine flat bit down so these fish are always going to swim at an angle my other fish I've designed swim straight this fish here at the beginning it has the flat bits at the bottom the tails behind the seaweed flat bits at the bottom so it swims straight these ones are crooked can't do a lot about it except not use them but I've got a lot made these ones I've actually 
didn't use pre-made ones, I actually drew them into the graph paper and just sewed them in as I went with everything else. More seaweed, more seaweed. There's a stingray. I don't have enough black to do it all in black. I will get some more black um, fabric because I need to need it for some other things. Then we come along to the cliff face that you've seen before that I added in the other week. And that's the corner. And going up you know, another three blocks. So that is the bottom row. I probably should have left it till this afternoon to film this because I think it's rubbish. Come along the stingray, back to the fish, the spotty one. Obviously this quilt is not done to realistic colours and I don't care. Um, the cliff obviously is brown, the seaweed tends to be yellow and green. This is using up some of that fabric from my very first throw rug that I made. My favourite, my favourite quilt. Turtle, seaweed, seaweed. Lots more seaweed. And back to the first fish. And the border. So that is the bottom row of the quilt and a bit up the side. What I've also got, this is a bit bigger so I might have to just move the camera a bit so I can show what we've got is I've got the top two rows and two hexagons down into the top of the next row there's ten rows in total so you've seen the first one this is rows nine and ten and the top two rows of hexagons in row eight so this is a bit bigger and a bit more detailed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it this way so I'm guessing you can zoom out I still can't see okay what I have here is I have and it's probably not showing up really I have the shark which is why I needed to go down the bottom couple of rows into row 8 in order to incorporate the shark and allow for the fin so the shark's just hanging there the rest of them will be in water and I'm still waiting to get that fabric so I'm working my way up from the bottom this will just stay as is so this is the shark, clouds, birds, I'll fold him back in and then fold that along. There's the lighthouse which I think you've seen before. Birds, I'm not bothering about all these bits of threads that are everywhere. I'm not even thinking about getting the clothes brush onto it until it's more complete or totally complete. So there's the lighthouse. Come along past the lighthouse. We've got more sky, more sky, more sky. And then we have the finished dolphin and once again it came down into that eighth row down at the bottom there we've got we've got more sky more sky and sure what that's showing now because it's rubbish because the sunlight I shouldn't have done this this early in the day um, the cliff face 
and some birds and that looks better so that's the cliff sorry about the shadows from the windows so we've got the cliff some birds now we'll come back the dolphin Sky, bird, sky. The lighthouse. And the top corner with some birds. And there's the shark that's not very easy to see actually. There he is. There's his um, tail. His gills. And along to his eye. This is one of the designs that I'm going to have on, on my merchandise. There'll be fish, like the straight fish, not the angled fish. Um, the shark because it's my design and I'll sort out some other ones but I'm actually looking forward to having a a cat with the logo and the shark so that is basically where we're at what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some photos to put at the end of this video um, just to show it, you know, not just in the thumbnail, but just each stage of it. And so I'll probably do the these top rows, probably four photos. So just, it'll just be a pretty much a silent slideshow at the end. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Any comments, any thoughts? Um... Yeah, throw them in the comments and as you know I'll always reply to them. Thank you.